Okay, this is my Windows Server machine. Go to my course homepage, companion website. Go to labs, lab zero one. So we are going to install the Chrome browser. It's already installed. Now I will show you how to install Visual Studio Chrome earlier and PowerShell. We scroll down to find the software. Visual Studio Code, PowerShell, Chrome Emil. Right, we are going to install three pieces of software. So Visual Studio Code, we just download this one, it's the stable build. And you see uh, the download is completed within several seconds. So I open it. Oops, I need to download that uh, another version, the system installation. I like that version. So go to uh, download, select the Windows. Here it says user installer, and we can scroll down to find the system. The system installer. Here, scroll down at the bottom. Here, system installer, 64 bit. We use this one. Okay, it's downloaded. Now I click and set it up. It's very straightforward. Here, please remember, tick this to open with code and uh, open with code on Windows Explorer file context menu and the directory uh, context menu. Okay, it's done. Now we could set up the next software. The PowerShell. Here you scroll down. The so download. are we installing Windows these on our um, host bit. machine or would these be installed on the, the yeah, Windows server once we get it set if up? If you use the host machine, then you ins install your host machine. If you want to install your virtual machine, then install your virtual machine. As we discussed, this, uh, in the lecture, you may use your host machine, then you don't need to install in your virtual machine. Okay. You just use your either your host Windows or the virtual machine. It's up to you. Okay, I will download this stable version here, 64 bit. The secret of it, okay, just let's see uh, here, add run with PowerShell serving context menu of PowerShell files. You take this one. Open here, you can also take this one. Enable PowerShell remoting, no, I don't want the remoting. Please pay attention, use this uh, stable version. This LTS version is also okay, 3.0.0.3. Okay, finished. Then we install this uh, Con Emil. Why do we need to install Chrome Emil? Because uh, this uh, Windows command prompt here, this command prompt you see, we can only open a single window. But this Chrome Emil will let you open several tabs. One tab for this uh, command prompt, the other tab for PowerShell, or several tabs for PowerShell. So here we find the 64 bit. Here the 
download it says preview plus alpha. Do we have a stable version? Come on, Emil. Let's see what is the stable version. Search this Come on, Emil. Maybe that's not the. Okay, we need to go to this place. Go to his official website. Oops, it, it is this place. Let's see where there is a stable release. When we try to download, we come to this place, we come jump to another place. And here we have this uh, preview plus alpha version. Okay, it's so a downloading, but it's uh, all covered with uh, 7-zip, so we still need to download 7-zip. The 64-bit. Okay, it's uh, installed. Now, for this Kongamil, I want to cut it, put in a folder. Let's call it ITS system. Uh, and uh, create a folder, let's call it tools. And we paste here. Because I installed 7 zip, so I can use it. Let's have a look, open it, you see, uh, we can run it right away. So we extract to this uh, go ML pack. There is a 64 bit, we can run this one. And here is a default command is a CMD. The, you can choose several uh, command settings. For example, command which uh, for 32 bit partial, partial admin, and so on. Then OK. Now you see I show a tab with command prompt. You can also create a new tab here, for example, for partial. And this one is partial, this one is command. So this command is a, a very convenient tool. For you to use. Now we still need to download a git. Not GitHub. Let's search git. Okay, this is the official website. Download this git for Windows. Here, the download completed. So we install this git, choose the default uh, settings. So I will choose the default settings. Okay, I think we installed all required tools. We just record con ML PowerShell. We also installed uh, Git 7 zip. Okay, now we can, uh, this, this step is completed. Now we can go to this step. You may do this one on your Windows or your Windows Server. 
it's up to you and it depends you install these tools on your host or on this uh, server virtual machine you use only one of them is uh, good enough for the whole course open command prompt or con emu and run the following scripts inside it we have two script right zip to barcode.cmd and the one digital bat and this uh, PowerShare and open PowerShare and then run the following script inside it is a Chinese here dot ps uh, one so those code are provided on our course compare website go inside the code you see we have the batch those two files and we also have that uh, PowerShare the PowerShare. How do we download this uh, code? That is a quick way. Here is come to the home page of our code compiler. Copy this link. Yeah, copy this one. Then go to your course folder. And right click here and uh, git bash here. Open git bash here. Then I type git clone. Paste the link. Then it will download everything from our git website and it will create a for code ID 372 again because our code compiler website use ID 372. Inside here, let's go to labs, labs one, all the code that here, right? So then you can copy all the whole code. You need to copy the power share and the uh, batch. Control C, go back to our course folder here. We create a new folder called lab01. And paste your code here. Now you can go inside the batch and run these two Files. Actually, this zip to barcode will call this one digit. So you only need to run this zip to barcode. So how do we run it? You need a Windows command prompt. That is a, a quick way. If you right click, you'll see a PowerShell. You can open it here, right? So you open it, but this is PowerShell. It's not a command prompt. You can type CMD. CMD is is a command prompt. So now you, you switch to command prompt. Now actually you, you run command prompt inside this PowerShell. And also you see this location here. The location is exactly this one, which means I'm inside this uh, folder. You type DLR, show the contents. You see these two files. Right? How do we run the CMD file and the BAT file? You didn't see the extension in this file explorer. How do you show that their extension? You change this view, click this view tab, tick this one, file name extension. Then you see the extension extensions are shown. We run that uh, zip to buckle to see, first you just have a try, zip to buckle. You can press your tab key to autocomplete the file name. I only type the ZI, then press tab key. Everything is completed automatically. And I press enter. Here it says you must find one nine numbers. So just the guess, the guess it says zip to barcode, so it looks like it will convert a zip code to a barcode and uh, file or nine numbers. So let's enter uh, file numbers, for example, four file three nine zero. But this is only one number, not uh, nine numbers, right? If you press under, you see it still ask you to enter five or nine numbers. So this is not a, a exact, maybe we, how do we enter 
five numbers. We need to separate. So this one, this is uh, how we enter file numbers. You can also try nine numbers by yourself. Here I only show file numbers. Now you see a barcode show up. So this barcode for this uh, zip code. So this program is used to convert a zip code into a barcode. And uh, when you look the source code, here now you can right click, open with code. This is the Visual Studio code. Now you can see these uh, two files, they are syntax highlighted. Here, these are one digit dot bat. It's okay, you don't understand this stuff because we are going to learn next week. Here, this file, it will call that one digit dot bat. You can find the usage. So let's see where it called the one. Here, you see it say call one digit, right? This file is call this file. These are the batch programming and we will learn next week. So our environment is good for this uh, batch program. Now we want to try that PowerShell. Here, this is a PowerShell. We can uh, open it with uh, code. Actually, that is a quick way you can open all the code. Go to this lab zero one folder. You right click on this folder. You see that is open with code. Then you see two subfolders, one for that batch folder, the other one for this PowerShell. They're all show up here. There's a PowerShell. Here the PowerShell, it asks us install the recommended extension for PowerShell. It's okay, install it. Installing. It will give us more functionalities. Okay, in this uh, file, how do we run this uh, Chinese ear dot ps1? You can go to this link to have a look. What source code? I collect them from the internet and I put the reference for your convenience. So you can copy this one. Come here to have a look. Here you see just the source code. There's no explanations here. You will see some explanation about those files. So I found that script from this website. Okay, in this program, how to run it? We don't know, right? We just have a try. Here, inside this folder, we, we can still use this uh, shell. This is a power shell. So how do we go back? So if you don't know how to go back currently, you can uh, right click here and uh, open a power shell, open here. And let's try some simple command. You use cd means change a directory. Dot dot means it's a parent folder. Here you see I come back to lab zero one. You type a DRL. Then you see these two subfolders are here. You can use cd change to PowerShell. And we will learn all these commands next week. So in this lab part one, you may also practice some basic commands. Then press enter, there are here you see my Chinese year dot ps1 is here. How do I run it? I use a dot, dot means a current folder, followed by this uh, backward slash, then type chi, press your tab key, it will be completed automatically. Press enter, the file showed up, and it uh, does not run the program. So how to make it uh, executable for this, uh, this one? 
Here I didn't switch back to my PowerShell. I'm still in that CMD, right? We type exit to exit that command we executed at the beginning. So now you see when I exit, now you see there is a PS show up. This PS show up means now we are inside the PowerShell. Inside the PowerShell, now we can run this uh, PowerShell script. And also you see its color is changed. But here it's inside a batch. I need to CD dot dot and CD to my PowerShell folder. You can see the file is here. Now I run it again. Dot ps1. So this time it run right? It says separate values for the following parameter. Type this one for help. Now, supply a year, for example, this year, 2021st. So you see this year is a Chinese year of the ox. How about last year? If we just put a primate here, for example, dash, my year, followed by that 2020. You see 2020, was a Chinese year or the rat. So this is the way uh, how to be run the PowerShell script and you will learn actually there are many ways to invoke this PowerShell script. Let Here, for example, if you just have this one for help, we will get a, a error because when this problem show up, it asks us to end a year between this, uh, these two numbers. So for example, 1999 is a year of rabbit. So you can uh, practice by yourself. Now we complete the demonstration of all the required tasks for uh, Windows. Here you scroll down to have a look for the lab description. Here we installed all the required software and this uh, step for the batch script and the PowerShell script. And we complete all the Windows part. And right now I'm inside my Ubuntu. First, I go to our course homepage, our course companion website. Okay, scroll down, come to our lab, lab zero one. Here inside the lab zero one. Now let's complete all the part related to Ubuntu. The guest tour is already set up in the demo part one. Now we install Visual Studio Code. Uh, that is 7-zip we've already installed in part one and the Git is already in installed in part one. So here we only install this Visual Studio Code. Again, we would like to create a folder to hold all stuff we are going to practice today. Your this file explorer. Its name is called Kager, the file manager. Here, my username, use I, means instructor. In your case, please use your first name. In the documents, now I create a folder quit ITS. 372. Now for Visual Studio Code, we go to its website here. Go to the website, scroll down to find the download. Here for the Linux part, we use this DB for Ubuntu. Here you see this Ubuntu Debian 64-bit. 
Right now it's a uh, I save it. So by default, it is saved on my download folder. Here you can see it's on my download folder. I would like to Ctrl X, cut it, go to my edit system to two folder, create for create tools. Ctrl V paste here. Now, how do we install it? You can right click the empty space, uh, the empty part, the blank part, open in terminal. Right now we have a terminal. You can see this location, documents at S three seventy three tools. Is exactly this one. Okay, we use a uh, sudo apt install, followed by this uh, code. In Linux, you see this uh, folder subloader is a forward slash. On Windows, it's back, backwards, backwards slash. Type the password you set up during the installation of Ubuntu. Okay, the installation completed. Now you can type code. Code is a Visual Studio code. Press under. You will see a Visual Studio code pop up. So this is the Visual Studio code on uh, Ubuntu. Let's close it. Now we download the scripts on our course compare website. Again, we use the same way. Open the home page here. Go to the home page, code, click the down arrow, copy this, uh, copy this link here, copy to clipboard. Go to our terminal window, but maybe it's a good idea to switch to the first idea is 372. We don't want to pull the code under to us. Right now I'm under uh, idea 372. You type ls and you will learn the Linux command uh, in the second half of this semester. Currently, you can practice some simple command in uh, demonstration part one. Again, we use a git clone similar to what we have done on Windows. Paste the link. Now you see the download is complete. You can come here to have a look. Yeah, and this idea is 372, uh, idea is 372 is uh, graded because we use the name idea 372. This may be a little bit confusing. But now inside we see all the stuff, the labs, lab 01, the code, we copy only this part, bash. Can you see, go back to the idea 372 fold, right click, Click uh, for the greater lab zero one and paste the code here. Go inside, top click, open this bash. Now we have only one file. It says add to two numbers dot sh. So just guess it looks like you used to add two number. You just click this terminal window. Or well, you right click here, open a terminal window from this location. I would like to go from this place. Here we cd to lab 01, right? You type ls, you see there is a bash, cd into bash, ls, you see that add to two num dot sh. If we try to run it, nums dot sh, you will see the permission denied because currently it's not an executable file. How do we make it executable? We use a Linux command called change mode, ch mode, plus x means make it executable to everyone. Now you type ls again, you see the color turns green. 
before it's uh, white, it's not an executable. Now it's green, it's an executable. So you can use the arrow key to bring up the history command you typed here as to nums.sh. Now you press enter. It asks you and the first number, let's say 10, and the first number again, 20, and the result is a 30. So now it looks like inside the program there is a mistake. Here should be second. So how do we add it to the code? Right click this code, you can open with C. You here we have open with the widget code. Right now it's uh, opened. So you need to correct the mistake. You can read this. We should be able to read this program even though we don't know how to write it. Right here, end first number, end first number. The one we add, and the second number. Control S, save it. And uh, close it. Now we run it again. And the first number, 20. And uh, now you see it says end the second number, right? We type 30. And it shows the result is uh, 30. So it looks good. And now we complete all the tasks for Ubuntu. Install Visual Studio Code and uh, run this script as to nums.sh.